Hi guys, I'm back with another video and today I have a haul video. A haul from the Goodwill. Um, it is a book haul. And then I have two items that are from Target. So we can start with the two items from Target since they hold all of my things from the Goodwill. I found this cool little bag in the Target dollar section. But these bags were actually $3. So the front of it is striped. Um, and I think this is also in honor of Halloween. And the back of it is black. Because these are kind of like the um, uh, witch stockings that are striped. And then my other bag, my other item is also a bag. And it's from Target as well. And it is also $3 because it is just the same exact thing, only orange and black stripe. And they hold quite a bit. And of course, the back of it is black. And it's actually a nice, like, sturdy kind of um, canvas bag. So this bag, and I think I have a uh, tan bag. That I'm gonna just keep these bags in my car so when I go to Goodwill I have bags with me um, because the Goodwill that I go to doesn't uh, give bags so you have to bring your own bags which at times yes it aggravates me but then other times I know it's like a good thing you know being like eco-friendly and all so and I have a crap ton of totes I just forget to bring them with me so it's not like I'm like I need to buy more totes. No, I have totes. I have too many bags, if you ask my husband. Uh, too many coffee cups, too many bags. And I can use use my bags. I just need to remember. Okay, so this, this haul is divided up into four different sections. Um, this haul is a book haul. I think I said that. Um, but it is divided up into four sections of books. Okay, so the first one... It's just one book and it's just a book that um, I've realized is nice to have on your library shelf for grades three through six but my preschooler because everything his brothers are interested in he has to be a little bit interested in so he looks at this too but here is my first book I like all of these books one of these books when I was working over at the um, probe school was when I first started seeing these books, like I think it's like two years ago, three years ago, when I worked over at the uh, probe steam school and I was reading a book like this and this is how I found out that the movie The Blob was based off of a an actual like pinkish, purplish substance that's on trees, or not trees, on plants. And it kind of like molds itself together and pulls itself apart. And that's how it lives. And there in like inspiration of the movie Blob came from that. Um, I don't know if it was entirely, the inspiration for that movie was entirely um, that thing, whatever that's called. I forgot the name of it. But I didn't do know that uh, the inspiration of how the Blob lives and pulls things that it runs over to be a part of it comes from that um that thing that grows on the plant but yeah so we have this book and I like the pages on it because not only is there cool pictures to go with each thing but there's also a good amount of reading as well so it's not just like a picture book for older kids um it does have a lot of important information on it but what I like about these is that this, the information in these books are straight into the point. So it doesn't like have stu uh, students like guessing for more, but it just makes them, it gives them enough information to get straight to the point, but intrigues them enough to go do like further research um, on their own with stuff. So and there's one more page for you. I think that's now the second book in that series that I own. Okay, next book is by one of my favorite vampire female authors, and it is Anne Rice. And this book is called Lasher, and I'm pretty sure this is 
heart of her vampire chronicles it is, i think either her vampire chronicles or the witching hour um I actually can't remember. Honestly, I just saw that it was an Anne Rice book, so I picked it up. I don't know where in this series this is. But I could tell that it's an older book because that's the picture that they use for it. And that is the biography that they put in there. So, and then the print. If you could just see, like, the way that these pages are like I don't know how to really show it to you but it's an old book the pages are old the co that cover is old I mean yeah. I don't know I don't know where that goes in the series I just know it's Anne Rice and so far I haven't read a book that I heard that I don't like so there's that all right, and then this next um, part, which is like the third part, is two books, and also by another favorite author of mine, but it is a male author, and this is Stephen King. This is Salem's Lot, which is the second book, I believe, that he wrote and published. Um, I'm buying books in the order of which he published them, and I'm pretty sure... Carrie was the first one and then this book was the second one which is Salem's Lot. Um, some of these have like the order of his books in them and then some of them don't. Yeah. Anywho, this is 621 pages. It's a small compact pocket book. So it's pretty thick as well. But, and it's super old if you can see, like, how small the print is in these books. So, yeah. So that's that one. And the, the binding looks a lot like the front cover. So, that's Salem's Lot. And then, of course, I found the infamous Pet Cemetery. So, this is, like an older uh, book, I believe, but it doesn't have a jacket on it. So the jacket was taken off and they have engraved on, like that's a signature, that's his signature, Stephen King's, but it's like in a way to where it comes up off, or no, it goes into the, um, the heart part of it. So it's not like a, like he wrote that out with, um, like a machine or something this looks like he took a marker and wrote into the book or they stamped it in the book one or two but anyway that is a signature that is a Stephen King signature I don't know if that counts as this being a signed copy but you know this is also an older hardback print of the book because look at that chapter number only the old books are written like this if you ever read an, an old small paperback book uh like even a romance novel you'll see that the books are set up like that to where it's very old looking name up there and page number and the print's just really really small but so that is Pet Cemetery. Say nothing fancy about it. Just the black cover and um, his signature. Look like it's stamped in there. All right. Now to the bestest part of this entire haul. The books that got me started in the first place with reading horror. That is goosebumps I will always and forever be a diehard R.L. Stein fan because of his goosebumps series when I was in 
I believe it was second grade all the way up until I graduated high school. I had every single Goosebump book, numbers one through whatever the last one was when um, when I graduated high school. Yes, while I was still in high school, I was collecting the Goosebump books. And then I moved to Georgia. My mom was still living in the house. And then one day when I came home for a visit, she had moved and the bookshelf stayed and all the books stayed. So I lost all of my Goosebump books. But then I went to Goodwill and magically on that first shelf, there was just Goosebump book after Goosebump book after Goosebump book on sale for, I thought it was a quarter, but it's 50 cents each. Maybe I think they were on sale when I picked them up. But anyway, super, super, super cheap. Okay. And if you go right now on Amazon looking for Goosebump books, the original ones that are like this, and I think there's some that are even older that look like this, where there was like the two colors there. Um, I think the last time I looked at them, the collection was like over $300. So I was like very happy when I saw these at the Goodwill. All right, so I'm gonna do one at a time and I'm just gonna hold up uh, the book so you can just see the cover. I'm not gonna go through what each one is about, partially because I don't remember all of them, but I do remember some of them. And no, these are not in order and I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure none of these are in order. Um, so first we have, it came from beneath the sink. Blood Monster 4. I actually don't remember any of the Blood Monsters. Say Cheese and Die Again. I remember this one because I love that one. I Live in Your Basement not the same as stay out of the basement. Egg monsters from Mars. That blob looks almost the same as the under the sink or I live in your basement blog. blog. Legend of the Lost Legend. Legend of the Lost Legend. Uh, the Horror at Camp Jelly, Jelly Jam. Ooh, I can't talk. Night of, Lived, Night of the Living Dummy 2. As you can imagine, I don't like ventriloquist dolls because of goosebumps. I also don't like gnomes because of goosebumps. Vampire Breath. For the longest time, I also did not like jack-o'-lanterns because of this bump. The Werewolf of Fever Swamp. Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes. The Werewolf of Fever Swamp. Double copy, see? That's how much I wasn't paying attention because I just grabbed books. Probably got to figure out something to do with the doubles. Or actually, you know what? Because as soon as I get a classroom again, um, all those are going on my shelves and, you know, kids like to fight over stuff. The Haunted School. Blood 3. It's the slime that never dies. It's like R.L. Stein's version of uh, The Blob. Welcome to Dead House.
The Hairiest Adventure. Teen Wolf. It's Teen Wolf. The Blob That Ate Everyone. See, another blob. Deep Trouble. Chicken, chicken. Ghost speech. My boys actually really like ghost speech. The, uh, the show series. Or the show episode. Werewolf skin. jack-o-lanterns and that's why I didn't like jack-o-lanterns the shocker on shock street and how I got my shrunken head heads up okay that's orange book, so let's put those books back in there. So that way I can have space for the other bag of books. Now, the second bag of books. Alright. Let me take some of my coffee. The Abominable Snowman of Pasadena. How to Kill a Monster. The Cuckoo Clock of Doom. One Day at Horrorland. This is a second copy of this one, which kind of makes me happy because my first copy, the cover broke off of it, and I don't know where the cover is. Piano Lessons Can Be Murder. I remember this being my very first Goosebump book that I picked up because of the floating hands, and it kind of reminded me of the Adams Family. And I remember that I was in a third grade at my elementary school, which I won't name the name, um, and yeah, that's, that's where I first picked up Goosebump books and it was this one. And I remember owning three copies of this when I was little, cause I kept reading it so much that I messed up the pages. <sighs> um, let's get invisible. Egg Monsters from Mars. So another duplicate of that. My Best Friend is Invisible. Night of the Living Dummy 3. So it looks like I just need to get the first Night of the Living Dummy, but I think I have the Night of the Living Dun Dummy in a graphic novel. It's like a goosebump book that has four stories in it and Night of the Living Dummy is the first one. The Barking Ghost. Hellhound. The Curse of Camp Cold Lake. The 
be careful what you wish for. I think this is the second copy I own. And I believe this is the second Goosebump book that I'd ever read because I remember always getting in trouble and be like, man, I wish I was grown. Man, I wish I wish, you know. And my mom was like, oh, you like Goosebump book. Here, read this. I came across this in the store. And I remember reading it and I liked it. And then I was like, ooh, you better be careful what you wish for. The Haunted Mass 2. I believe this is also the second um, copy that I own because I think the first copy that um, I bought, you know, after I lost my books a long time ago was at, I think I did a book haul on this channel and I got a copy of this book along with the first book at Half Price Books because I went and bought both of these books for an education class that I was doing and the project that I chose to do with these books was um, uh, a book, was it a book club book on how I would have the students read the book while they were in class, what I would have them do for homework, the assessments I would take and all that stuff. And I remember having both of these. Um, let's see, The Shocker on Shock Street. So second copy of that. Attack of the Mutant. Can Ghost Camp. Um, A Night in Terror Tower. I remember this. I don't know if I ever read this one, but I think I did own, used to own this. Don't Go to Sleep. Phantom of the Auditorium. So his version of The Phantom of the Opera. And I do remember this book, but I don't think that I... I don't remember reading it. I do remember owning it, but I don't remember if I read it. And then lastly, Deep Trouble 2. So not the first one, but just the second one. So it's not every single one, but that is a big chunk of old covered Goosebump books. Because now they're coming out with these, you know, newer covers. Because with every generation, of course, you have to have like the most in covers or the most eye-catching covers. And for us, the simple covers used to be great for kids now. They got to be, you know, popping and all that jazz for them to be able to pick it up. But let me tell you, Goosebumps is still going strong. Um, I have students that listen to it or read it on this school program called Get Epic all the time. So that's always fun. All right. Just putting these up just in case I forget because I got a dog that likes to chew everything and if he chews my books he'll hurt my feelings and I might be ready to hurt him. So make sure I put those in there uh, immediately. All right so that is all I have for you and my gigantor um, book haul from Goodwill. I think it was a pretty good uh, book haul, pretty good steal found a lot of great Goosebumps books there and I found two of my favorite Stephen King books there and I crazy thing is is that as much as I've watched uh, Pet Cemetery, I've never read the book and because of the controversy that some fans are having with the remake of the um, second Pet Cemetery book I definitely wanted to buy it so that way I can read it but I didn't want to pay I think it was like the mass production was like 10 bucks. I don't like the mass productions, like the, the smaller ones. So if I cannot get it in that one, I won't. But um, if the Goodwill also has has it, I'm just going to take whatever the Goodwill has. And both of those are what the Goodwill had. So now I own a copy of uh, Pet Cemetery. So I'm just going to deal with it and read those small, small, small words. 
um, either that or I'm going to get the audio version of it soon because it's on sale right now for like 10 bucks. But I think I'm going to do the free audiobook trial and just get it for free. Because that just sounds a lot better than paying 12 bucks. So there's that. But anyway, that's my haul. If you like this video, please, if you like what you see in this video, please like this video, comment below, and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Bye, until next time.